As I noted in the introduction, engineering and construction projects are project-based. <clears throat> so I want to spend some time walking through the engineering architecture and construction life cycle. So uh, this is a typical life cycle. And what I want to go through is we're going to talk about the value chain participants. So when we're talking about projects, who are uh, the various groups, the various stakeholder groups, the various participants in the process that you're going to see in each one of these phases of a typical life cycle, which starts with planning, goes to preliminary design, uh, go into detailed design, and actually constructing operations and maintenance, and then end of life. So this is a simplified um, life cycle model, and we're going to step through those, talk about those folks that are involved. So when you think about the industry. Um, it's not just engineers, architects, and, uh, and construction professionals that get the work done. We're always interacting with others. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of interplay at certain parts of the project, and it takes a much larger team to get these projects done. So who are some of those um, key participants and stakeholders that are involved in the projects? And then, we're going to go through and step through some of the key questions. So at each phase of the life cycle, what are some of those key questions that have to be answered to make sure that we're ready to move on to the next stage and so that uh, stage is successful and that we get a successful project constructed, that it meets the needs uh, of the owner, that the operations and maintenance folks have the opportunity to have the equipment that they need, um, and that we've given some thought to the end of the life of the project as well. So let's spend a few minutes talking about the value chain participants. Starting with key stakeholders, we're looking at the, um, the planning element of the value chain. Key stakeholders are anybody impacted by a project. So use the example of a park, a new park being placed in a city. Uh, are folks going to be displaced by that park? Is it going to change their neighborhood, so the public? Um, what do the politicians think about this park? Are they for it or not for it? Would they rather see the money go somewhere else? Would the public like to see the money go somewhere else? Uh, those who want to come use the park, they would be stakeholders. Um, the uh, those folks that live around the park, uh, because this might change uh, what the uh, what the area looks like, uh, the noise associated with it. So those types of things, um, and your key stakeholders are anybody impacted by that project now and into the future. Planners, uh, those folks that help plan what this is going to be. So what are the overall goals? What's trying to be achieved? bankers, economists, how are we going to pay for this, and the politicians. When we get into preliminary design, when we start to think about, okay, uh, how can we actually do this, you start to involve the architects, the engineers, the cost and schedule folks to understand and appreciate the significant impacts on how this can be done and how we're going to do it. When we get into detailed design, in addition to the key stakeholders, you start to bring in uh, more of the engineering disciplines. So the mechanical engineering, the electrical, the civil, the geotechs, the structural, etc. Um, you start to work with those construction professionals thinking about how this can actually be built, um, type of equipment. So um, if this is some type of structure or facility that has specialized equipment, what do we need to be thinking about? We have to get enough information and understanding to be able to do a detailed design. So those are the folks that would be involved. When we talk about procurement and tendering then, the key stakeholders. Procurement and tendering. So this is when the prime contractor gets involved. Those that are looking to win the bid and want to take on this project. So the prime contractor gets involved, their subcontractors. So those that are actually going to help perform the work, their teams, um, the materials and equipment providers, they get involved. Thinking about uh, ways in which this is going to be done, costs of materials, timing, resources, uh, procurement lawyers. So some of these 
programs, and we're talking about engineering and construction projects, these can be massive in size. Uh, the contract documentation can be voluminous. Um, and you have a lot of thought, energy, and effort that goes into creating a, uh, a specification or procurement document, bid documents, which give a good understanding of what the goals and objectives are. So uh, contracts professionals, uh, the engineering staff, procurement lawyers, and all those that are responsible for actually making it happen. And then construction, so actually making this a reality the prime contractor, the subcontractors, they're actually doing the work. You have the trades. So you have iron workers, electricians, carpenters, all those folks that actually make it a reality uh, and help build this, um, this project. You need to be thinking about things like the equipment on site, safety, incredibly important in this industry. Uh, and the need to have safety professionals involved early on in the planning and certainly uh, during the construction phase itself and the engineers and architects working together to making sure that, um, that what you're getting in the final product is consistent with what you anticipated in the beginning. Then as we transition and turn this over to those folks that are going to use it, so think of it in the case of a building using that as an example, you then turning it over to the operators of that building. And the key stakeholders there are uh, the ownership of the building, the operations uh, management, the maintenance contractors, those that help uh, keep that facility in working order, making sure that it's efficient, effective. And then end of life. And end of life is almost going back to the beginning where you're considering different things and you, you are engaging planners uh, uh, again about what the future of this asset can be. Uh, bankers, economists, politicians, um, those that have a stake in this asset and its end of life and what's going to happen to it. So that's some of those value chain participants. We put them in these boxes but it's important to note as well that that they can shift and you'll see them working in uh, you know a across lines if you will and the better communication you have uh, the more likely you are to have a successful project. Now, uh, one other thing to note, uh, in many cases you will have a program manager that spans these various phases of the value chain that provides those services to an owner to help them navigate, or, you know, starting with planning and navigate through, in many cases, up through operations and maintenance. It's also important to note that the industry is starting to go uh, in a new direction, fully integrated project delivery, which is putting the responsibility on a single entity for delivery, in some cases all the way from the beginning, the planning, the financing, uh, all the way through operations and maintenance, in some cases end of life. So that's a fully integrated project delivery project, um, and it starts to to greatly blur, the, uh, blur those lines uh, around responsibilities. But one of the things I want to point out is if you think about um, where the, the costs of changes in the construction life cycle are and how you can impact those, it's important to think about how we could do this most effectively to break down those silos and have these entities work well across these various divisions.